means to talk about this. Is the Casa Rosa was a um, Rosa was a uh, Italian restaurant, despite the misleading name. It was on uh, 384 Court Street in Carroll Gardens in Brooklyn. It opened in 1979. It was you know mediocre at, at, on its best day. The Chinese virus killed it, and it closed in 2019. But what made the place different is that it was owned originally by Frank Pancioliano. It was a former Gallo gang guy, kind of like a, you know, a lieutenant in the operation. Uh, Punchy left that, the Gallo gang, after Joey Gallo was killed, 1972. He transferred peacefully to work on Vincent Chin Gigante's crew in Little Italy. He may have been possibly one of the three men who killed Albert Anastasia in a Manhattan barbershop. It's a, there's so many theories on who killed this Anastasia. I mean, a lot of people say it was Gallo and his guys because they were frantic, desperate for money. They'd do anything. Um, there's another school of thought that says guys came down from Rhode Island and did it, which seems to make sense to me. That way there wouldn't be any hard feelings after, after Anastasia was dead. I don't think anybody had any bad feelings about Anastasia. He was a prick. Uh, to put it nicely. Punchy lived most of his life with a bullet in his head during the first Colombo War. Uh, he was wounded by Hugh McIntosh in a sniper attack. And uh, also, apparently, it was Punchy who planted a bomb underneath Carmen Persico's car. The bomb exploded, but Persico escaped. Uh, you know, a lot of the guys on the Gallo side truly believed that... Uh, Frisco was the devil, the Diablo, something that had a name for him, because he escaped assassination so many times. So did Punchy on June 12, 1963. He escaped uh, <laughs> an assassin's bullet, a sniper. Um, he had been, a, I think I said he had been a pro boxer in his day. He died in 2014 at the age of 86. Uh, he had a brother who was a dwarf, who was sort of the gang uh you know, mascot, I guess. We used to grow priests in Ireland. We used to grow them from bits of people that we didn't like. But we overplanted. We had an epidemic. We were flooded with them. So, we tried to engage the rest of the world in a priest for potato swap. And we were conned by the Africans. Bastards! Took all our priests, not a potato between them. Pagan, spudless fuckers. Priest went over to Africa, and what happened? What do you think happened? They melted! <laughs> and now we've run out of priests in Ireland. There's none left. And irony of ironies. What's happening? Missionaries! From Africa! Coming to us! And at first the congregation is a little bit wary. No way! <laughs> are you the fella off the UNICEF box, are you? <laughs> Jesus wasn't black. No, he wasn't. He looked like one of the Bee Gees. <laughs> the sick fella. I like it. Because I think mass given by an African priest is slightly more passionate. It might rise us up once again. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Jesus went for a walk. <laughs> he wanted to get away from everybody. <laughs> he does not have to explain himself. He is Jesus. He was walking along, minding his own business. <laughs> and he came to a tree, a big tree. <laughs> right in the middle of the walk and up in the tree. <laughs> he saw somebody, the tax collector cunt. <laughs> and he said to the 
Zebedee, Zebedee, don't be wasting my time. Come and go from the trail. <laughs> and Zebedee replied, Jesus Christ, I will not come down from the tree because he was a stubborn fucker. <laughs> that is the gospel according to St. Luke. I don't like Luke.